Welcome everybody, I am Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I love watercolor. It's what I do every day of my life. It's really great. Uh, we do watercolor projects. We have a subscription box, we do a new project every week. We break it down so if you just want to try it and you have no experience, you can absolutely paint with us. And we're putting together just this um, kind of beginner series to just give you a little bit more information. Um, so you're a little bit more prepared when you paint with us, which is great. So um, this little snippet, we are going to talk about textures with watercolor. So um, there's a few different things that I'm using in this part of the, in this segment. Um, you wanna make sure you have paper towel. You wanna make sure you have some salt. You wanna make sure you have your brushes and your paint and your water, everything you need to paint, but also have paper towel and salt. So the first thing that we are going to do is uh, we are going to see what it looks like when you use your paper towel for texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my brush wet and I, I'm actually gonna use my liquid watercolors for this because they're fun, they're bright. So I'm gonna pick up a lot of paint on here and I'm gonna do um, just kind of a rectangle and I'm getting this brush stroke, this like rough brush right here because my brush is a little bit dry. So I'm just gonna wet it again, pick up some paint. Just get this nice wet area. Now you wanna make sure um, that it's still pretty wet when you do this because once it dries, it's a lot harder to lift. So I have my really wet. Now I want you to take your paper towel and paper towels are magical. They're magical in the way that they can lift color. So let's say you put a color down and it's too strong and you're like, what do I do? Just pick up your paper towel, lift it. So you can actually just take a point and lift some color up. Lighten it up just like that. The other thing that you can do is you can kind of like loosely grab it and just kind of like smush it against and you can get textures this way. So this is really handy. Let's say if I want to do a sky and I'll get some blue here so it can be, you know, kind of realistic. I do a nice blue wash. Nice and wet. And if I want to put clouds in while it's still wet, you want to work really quickly. You just take your paper towel and just start doing cloud shapes with it. Look, there's a cloud and another one. Look at that. So paper towels are super handy to have. You always wanna have one while you're painting. Not only is it a great way to pick up extra color if you don't want so much of a color, it's a great thing for you to dab with your brush if you have too much paint on your brush. And you can get some really cool textures. You can get clouds, all of that stuff just with a paper towel, it's pretty cool. Now, the next thing that we are going to play with is salt. So, and I have two different kinds of salt here. I have some thicker sea salt and I have just regular table salt. I really don't know if one works better than the other, so I thought it would be fun if we just did it together right now in front of each other. We're learning together. We're learning together. That's Keenan. I haven't introduced him yet. Hi. <laughs> He's running the cameras. Um, so I'm just going to get a different sheet here and I'm going to get my blue. I'll have a mix it a little bit of black so I get a nice deep blue. And um, I'm just going to get an area filled with color. Nice strong color going on. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna grind in some salt. And then you're just gonna kinda of let it be. Now when you first put it in the salt, you're not really gonna see anything happen. You're gonna be like, cool, what is it supposed to do? Tasty. <laughs> but as it dries, it's actually gonna force the pigment, wherever that salt hits, it's gonna force the pigment outside of it. So you get almost like, these explosion looking things, explosion looking textures. Now I'm gonna do the same thing right next to it and I'm gonna use table salt and that's just cause I wanna compare for fun. Cause somebody said that um, sea salt is the only salt that you can use to do this, but I really feel like I've used regular salt before and um, 
So I'm trying it. So this one is sea salt here. Let's get some more blue. Now you want to make sure that your um, wherever you're applying salt that it's wet. If it's dry, the salt's not gonna do anything, but you don't want a pool of water. If you have a pool of water on top, the salt's not really gonna do anything either. You just want a nice thin line. I mean, I feel like this is regular salt. Yeah, it looks like regular salt. It looks salt. like regular salt. I don't think I'd be able to tell if it wasn't. I don't know if I would either, but we're just going to, uh, we're just gonna see what it does. So we're just gonna wait for it to dry. So the other way to get really interesting texture when you are painting is just depending on um, the brushes you're using. For example, if I'm using my fan brush here, I'm gonna get this in some paint. And you can see that I'm gonna get different marks using that. Okay, so just like the type of brush that you're using. So that's a fan brush. And then I also wanna show you the different strokes that you can get using a round brush. Because round brushes, um, you can get thick to thin ones. So I'm just gonna kinda go over again really, sorry, I thought Keenan was laughing. <laughs> I'm just gonna go over really quick how to get thick, thick ones and how to get thin ones. So if I want a thick brush stroke, I'm going to, and thick is just going to cover more areas. It's going to fill in more space. So I'm going to have my brush as a more horizontal hold. I'm going to press down a little bit more. So it's going to, the entire belly of the brush is going to push down. And then if I want a really thin line, and for me personally, I like really thin, delicate lines, especially when I'm doing botanicals, um, stems, leaf work, all of that stuff. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you are going to want to have a more vertical hold and um, you're just gonna lightly press your paintbrush to the paper. So this is just really light pressure on the tip and I can get a nice thin line. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is you don't wanna plant your wrist because if you plant your wrist, you're really limited in terms of how long your thin line can be. If you're just doing small thin lines, it's not a big deal because it's like, if that's all you're gonna do, you don't need to have a lot of motion. But if you're doing long thin lines, you wanna kind of keep your arm lifted up and you're gonna move from your shoulder, not from your wrist. So you're just going to, um, so like my wrist is touching my paper, but the weight isn't on it. And you can just keep on going like this. Light pressure, barely there, nice thin lines. Now the other thing to keep in mind is with watercolor, sometimes if you have too much paint on your brush and not enough water, you're gonna get a rough kind of stroke. And I just picked up some water, so it's not gonna, let's see. Let me dry off my brush. So this is with not a lot of water. See how rough that stroke is? Now, for me, I like smooth lines. However, if I'm trying to put texture into something, sometimes I really want that rough kind of textured look, and I can let the paper do a lot of that work for me just by using kind of more of a dry brush. So if you want this kind of rough texture look, then make sure you don't have a lot of water on your paintbrush. You have some paint, and then you can just do these kind of textural brush strokes going on. So kind of just play with it. Whenever you get a new brush, um, you can kind of play with what it's doing, um, how much paint you need, how much water you need, and you can just kind of play with it. So if you have a good amount of water on there, then you should have a smooth line. See how smooth those are? Nice and smooth. Those look so good. <laughs> Thanks, Keenan. So just kind of play. For me, I know that when I'm doing like trees, um, one thing that I really like to do is I kind of like to mess with my mark making. So really play with the different marks you can make, right? We can do thin lines, we can do thick lines, and I like to do um, dashes, and that's how I do a tree. So for example, if I wanted to do a tree really quick, I would do the trunk, which is this nice thin line, okay? And then I would start putting dashes in 
And so I'm not going through and trying to draw out every single leaf that would be on the tree or every single, what's another word? What do pine trees have? Pine trees. <laughs> Pine needles. Pine needles. Oh, you, wanna, <laughs> you were really close, Dang Keenan. It. You're not going to use, you're not going to go in and draw every single pine needle. Um, so like for evergreens or something, I'm going to be using um, this kind of, it's random mark making, mark making that are dashes that kind of go in different directions. If I were to do more of a Christmas tree, then I would do that, but then also on like the edges, I would maybe move to a smaller brush and do kind of swoops along the edges. So you, I'll do it on this side and you can see how those kinds of swoop change the shape of the tree. So if this tree is cut in half, that looks more like a Christmas tree. That one looks more like a tree, you know, in the forest. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. <laughs> I wish I knew my trees. I'm sorry, I don't. Um, but anyways, just, um, just play with your mark making and remember that um, the texture that you add to it, the type of brush stroke that you're using to paint really does make a difference in your painting. So just go ahead and play. Now we're gonna check back in on our salt, our salt paintings here. If you remember, this one on the top was sea salt and this one here was just table salt. I feel like they both did the same thing, right? Mm. So either they're both sea salt. So either they're both sea salt or maybe that information I heard was incorrect <laughs> where only sea salt works. Um, Cause it doesn't, this one is working too. Now to get it off, now this is still a little wet. So you don't wanna like scrape it off, especially cause there could be sections that are wet. So you can like, I'll show you, you'll get like smears on your paper. That's not what you want. Um, so a lot of the times I actually just leave the salt directly on my uh, watercolor and then um, sometimes I'll like just kind of knock it off and then that way it's not going to, it doesn't have such a strong chance of smearing. Now salt textures are super fun. I use them painting so many different things. We actually did a fox not too long ago where we did salt textures in the fur. We've also done a galaxy sky. I would say probably the sky is the one where I use salt textures the most because it kind of gives you that illusion of depth that sky has. So um, kind of play with it. There's no wrong way to put, to put salt in there. So really just have fun. It's just a great way to add some kind of explosion textures going on. I think the bigger, the um, salt piece would be the larger area the explosion would be. So just kind of play with it. Um, now going on with, in theme of galaxy and stars, I really like to use Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. It comes in a big old jar, um, but we, we have these in our kits, our paint kits when it comes with Bleed Proof White, they're just like a smaller version. And, um, the great thing that you can do is you, it's basically almost like an acrylic paint, but you can mix water with it and it still stays pretty opaque. So you can use white gouache for this also, or even white acrylic, but I'm gonna add stars to this. If this was gonna be my sky, I'm gonna get my paintbrush wet. I'm gonna dip it in my white. And then um, there's a couple different ways that you can get the paint onto your paper. One of them is you can like flick your brush. Be careful though. Don't do this around like your nice computer or expensive stuff because you will get paint everywhere. Another way that you can do it is you can actually hit it against your finger and you're going to get these great splatters and um, they're really fun. Another thing that works really great is a toothbrush. You take your toothbrush, you dip it in the white and then you just kind of like run your fingers over it towards the paper and they'll like splay out. And then, um, so if this was gonna be my sky, I can turn a couple of these into shooting stars. So I can take some of that paper, that white paint that's already laid down and just kind of smear it out. So they're almost shooting. And then you can go in with just, I'm using a round two and put some larger stars there because the great thing about 
having it splay like that is it's going to have that same random feel that the sky does with stars. And also you're going to get various sizes. You're going to get some that are super tiny. You're going to get some that are nice and thick, maybe a little bit wider, which is very true to what we see in nature. So kind of play with it. You can go in and put stars in. But if you ever want to do a galaxy sky, laying down some color first, adding some salt, letting that dry, and then flicking some white paint onto it, you can get some great textures and your sky is going to look totally natural. Now there's one more thing I want to go over in terms of texture and it's one of my most favorite techniques. It's similar to wet on wet. Well, it is wet on wet because it's wet onto wet. <laughs> Oh. That was really repetitive. That I cleared. didn't mean for it to sound no, that, that way. Cleared it up for <laughs> so what I like to do is, um, let's say I'm painting an area. I'm going to have strong color. Let's say I just do like a rectangle dart down here. While it's still wet, I'm going to pick up some paint and I'm just going to drop water into that. And then that water is going to do the same thing that salt does a little bit, where it's going to move that color to the outside of that water. Um, edge. So this is super fun to do because once that dries, you're going to come back and you're going to get some super interesting um, textures in there, which is really what I think is beautiful about watercolor is there's always this element of accidental art. You don't really know how it's going to turn out, but you kind of just like put it down and you leave it alone and you trust it to do its thing and you're gonna get something super cool. And then it's just unique to you. It's really hard to mimic, to mimic those same textures and spots when you're just kind of dropping in water and color places. So those are some really cool tricks to get some texture on your paintings just to go over them. We played with salt. Use a paper towel. Um, play with brushes and different strokes. And also, don't be afraid to drop in a little bit of water here and there just to see what happens. Thank you so much for watching um, this part of the series. We have other series uh, where we talk about color theory and we talk about materials and we talk about basic techniques. And of course, we have a different watercolor project every single week. The tutorials are totally free. You can find that on our YouTube channel, um, Let's Make Art on YouTube. Um, but thank you for tuning in and watching this. That's it. Bye.